This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can find all the cards in this video in their store by using the links in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nitsa Hone, and it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. Today, we're going to look at Lizards. It seemed like a good time to do this, because with the release of Outlaws of Thunder Junction, Wizards of the Coast retired Viashino as a creature type, and replaced it with Lizard. You can see this on Laughing Jasper Flint, who would probably have had the Viashino creature type in the past, but instead he's a Lizard. This makes some sense alongside the other names and creature types for other anthropomorphic animals in the multiverse. Viashino is now more analogous to Loxodon, for example, which show up on multiple planes and are always elephants, but they have elephant typing. They aren't loxodons on the type line. Anyway, with this influx of new lizards as a result of this erotum, it became a lot more interesting to look at lizards as a creature type since their ranks have now more than doubled. I also have never done a top 10 on Viachinos or lizards. To be eligible for this list, a creature needed to have the lizard creature type or create a lizard creature token. In all, there were 153 cards eligible, and in this video we'll look at the 10 that have left the biggest impact on competitive magic. Here's a quick reminder on how I score cards in these videos. A first tier top 8 is worth 2 points, this includes events like Pro Tours, and a second tier top 8 is worth 1 point, this includes events like Regional Championships. Alright, let's take a look at Magic's top 10 lizards. At number 10, it's Lord Dracus. For one generic, a blue and a red, it's a 2-3 lizard beast, and it has mutate for two blue-red hybrid mana. This means that you can cast it for this alternate cost, provided you target a non-human creature with it. You can choose to put the Dracus on top or bottom of that creature, and they mutate into one creature with the stats of the creature on top and the abilities of all the creatures in the pile. When Lord Dracus mutates, and this works no matter where you put it on the pile, you get to return an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. This means that if you keep mutating onto a pile of creatures with the Dracus, you're going to keep getting spells back. Lord Dracus gained all of its points in a standard mutate deck alongside Vadrock Apex of Thunder. Both of these mutate creatures love having spells in the graveyard, and when you mutate one onto the other, you get both triggers, delivering some awesome value. Lord Dracus hasn't gained any points since 2021, though. At number 9, it's Viashino Sandstalker. For one generic and two red, it's a 4-2 with haste that returns to its owner's hand at the end of the turn. There are several Viashino cards from Magic's early days that have this self-bounce effect in haste. This is the only one that performed well enough to make the list, though. Unsurprisingly, it was played in mono-red aggro decks in both block and standard between 1997 and 1998. The Sandstalker had a tiny bit of synergy with the powerful artifact Cursed Scroll, because you could still empty your hand every turn to do as much damage as possible, but getting the Sandstalker back still meant you could activate the scroll for damage. At number 8, it's Bounding Krasis. Most lizards in Magic have red somewhere in their identity, but the Simic likes splicing lizard DNA with other things, as you can see here. For one generic, a green and a blue, this 3-3 fish lizard has flash, and when it enters the battlefield, you can tap or untap target creature. While in standard, it was featured in collected company decks, which could put the Crassus into play from the library at an opportune time for that Enter the Battlefield ability. But the Crassus hasn't made the transition to collected company decks in other formats, and hasn't gained any points since 2016. At number 7, it's Viashino Heretic. For 2 generic into red, it's a 1-3, and it has an activated ability for 1 generic into red, and you tap it, and it destroys target artifact, and Viashino Heretic does damage to the controller equal to the artifact's mana value. Having a repeatable way to destroy artifacts and do damage at the same time is a powerful thing in the right metagame. Urza's Block Constructed was one such metagame, with many decks looking to power out Phyrexian Colossus in the extreme early game, often using mana rocks like War and Power Stone. Destroying those was quite profitable for the Heretic. It also saw sporadic play in Vintage between 2007 and 2018, when it sometimes appeared as a sideboard card in decks like Dragon Stompy. It can be particularly useful in that format against shop decks which are filled to the brim with artifacts. It hasn't gained any points anywhere since 2018, though. And number 6, it's Scorch Spitter. This little lizard is pretty simple. He's 1 red mana for a 1-1, one, one, and when he attacks he does 1 to the player or planeswalker he's attacking. That's a nice one drop for red aggro decks as it can quickly pile on the damage and even do damage if it gets blocked. Like Viashino Sandstalker, it's a lizard that gained all of its points in aggressive red decks. At number 5, it's Frilled Mystic. For 2 green and 2 blue, it's a 3-2 with flash that counters a spell when it enters the battlefield. 
Saying no to your opponent and adding a relevant body to the board at the same time is a great feeling, and that's exactly what this Elf Lizard Wizard can give you. It gained all of its points while in Standard, most notably in Simic Flash decks, which, as the name would tell you, were loaded up with interactive creatures like the Mystic. Jamming your deck full of Flash creatures is nice, because it means you can leave mana up for pretty much any spell in your deck, and still add something to the board if your opponent plays around your counter magic. Frilled Mystic hasn't gained any points, though, since rotating out of Standard. And number four, it's Sprouting Thrinax. For one of each Jun color of mana, it's a 3-3 that makes three 1-1 one -one Sapperling tokens when it dies. That is really efficient, and it's challenging for your opponent to ever deal with it conventionally without ending up way behind. Again, all of its points in standard Jun decks between 2009 and 2010. These decks had great mana, so casting this was no problem, and they also tended to feature a bit of a sacrifice sub-theme, and getting four bodies out of a single Thrinax was extra sweet. At number three, I've got two cards because they're very similar. Rapid Hybridization and Incubation Incongruity. Hybridization is a legit number three card, while Incubation Incongruity would have been at number eight. Both of these are cards that deal with a creature and give its controller a 3-3 frog lizard token. Hybridization is an instant that destroys the creature for one blue, and the Incongruity half of Incubation Incongruity costs one generic a green and a blue, exiles the creature, and leaves behind the same frog lizard token. Incubation Incongruity is of course also a split card, which means you can choose to cast the other side, which in this case is Incubation, a sorcery for a green-blue hybrid mana that lets you look at the top five of your library and reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Rapid Hybridization has been the more successful of the two overall. It's a pretty amazing deal for blue, which often doesn't have a way to destroy creatures so efficiently, it gained all of its points in standard devotion to blue decks. Those decks were mono blue and did not have a whole lot of cards that could actually answer big threats, so hybridization was even played in the main deck in most versions of the deck. You could also use it in a pinch on your own creature. Incubation and Congruity saw play in standard adventure decks, where the card selection Incubation could offer you was extra powerful, since creatures with adventures also came with spells attached to them. The Incongruity have was some nice upside to have on a powerful card selection spell. More recently, it's also been played in Modern Living Index. Incongruity gives the deck a way to deal with early creatures without putting them in the graveyard, which is never what you want to do with the Living End deck. And the 3-3 Frog Lizard will get swept away once Living End resolves. Of the two, Incubation Incongruity is doing the most right now, so maybe someday it will overtake Rapid Hybridization, which hasn't gained any points since rotating out of Standard. At number two, it's Viashino Pyromancer. Like Scorch Spitter, this lizard is nothing fancy. It just does damage. For one generic in a red, you get a 2-1 that does 2 damage to target player or planeswalker when it enters the battlefield. That may not immediately seem all that impressive, but you're actually getting a really efficient deal with the Pyromancer. It feels pretty good to pay 2 for a guaranteed 2 damage that can even sometimes pick off a planeswalker, while also adding a 2-1 to the board that can threaten to do even more damage. The Viashino was a fixture in red aggro decks when it was in Standard, and it's continued in that role in Pioneer, although it has slowed down a bit over the last couple of years. And at number one, I've again got two cards, Basking Rootwalla and Blazing Rootwalla, partly because they're so similar, and because these days they usually see play together. The Basking one is a legitimate number one, while Blazing Rootwalla would have been at number four if I gave it its own spot. Basking Rootwalla is the much older card. For one green mana, it's a 1-1, one, one, and you could pay one generic and a green to give it plus two, plus two until end of turn, but you can only use that ability once per turn. Importantly, it also has Madness for zero mana, and that means when you discard it, you can just cast it for free. The Rootwalla was the cornerstone of block standard and extended decks in the early 2000s that specialized in efficiently discarding cards and casting them for their madness cost. Then it largely went idle for a couple of decades until its younger brother came along in 2021's Modern Horizons, Blazing Rootwalla. It costs one red for a 1-1, one, one, and you can pay one red to give it plus two plus zero until end of turn, but again you can only pay that cost once per turn. Like its basking relative, it also has madness for zero. You don't need me to tell you just how powerful it is to get something for free, even when they are relatively small creatures like these two. Because Blazing Rootwalla is from Modern Horizons 2, the only 60 card formats it's legal in are Modern Legacy and Vintage. While it's seen some play in Modern, it's doing the most work alongside Basking Rootwalla in Legacy and Vintage, and especially in the latter. These two Rootwallas have helped propel Bazaar of Baghdad aggro decks to the top of Tier 1 in the format. 
The Bazaar is a land that lets you draw two cards and discard three cards. Obviously, this means if you discard some Root Wallows, you can just plop them into play on turn one, and the deck's ability to take advantage of all that discarding doesn't end there, as the Root Wallows can easily be joined by Hollow Ones and Venge Vines. The strength of these decks is how quickly they can assemble tons of damage on the board, and the two Root Wallows are going to keep putting up impressive finishes in vintage decks that do exactly that. So, those are the best lizards in Magic the Gathering. Do you want to build a lizard deck now that the creature type is more plentiful? If so, check out the description, where you can find a direct Card Kingdom link for each card that appeared in the video. If you want to catch future MTG Top 10s, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you want to catch up on the more than 720 other MTG Top 10s, including dozens more that look at a creature type, you'll see a playlist on your screen shortly. Thanks for watching.